Alrighty, welcome to a three on three cube draft where ooh hoo hoo, I have opened Ancestral Recall. You love to see it. That's not the, the end of the good news. I'm also passing to BK, so the nice hook and cut. Though actually, I'm going to take Ancestral and he's probably going to take Fire Covenant, maybe Stoneforge, maybe Sheldock or Adeline. I don't know. Nah, actually, knowing BK, he's going to take Scalding Tarn. Never mind. Can't really cut someone who started on Scalding Tarn, but I'm taking Ancestral. It's me, Mac, and Charles Wong battling against BK, Strider, and Updraft Elemental. Nice little three on three here. So, Tarn, Covenant, Mystic, Adeline, Sheldock. So, maybe I get Displacer Kitten back. All right. We take those. We take those. And second pick, I think I'm just going to take Chain Lightning. It's the, basically the perfect card to go with Ancestral, because Ancestral draws you a ton of cards. All you want to do is convert those cards into kind of interaction. So the best way to, you know, leverage Ancestral is cards like Chain Lightning or Oust or Memory Lapse, that sort of thing. But here, I mean, I would take Memory Lapse over Chain Lightning if one were to be offered. I'm going to take Chain Lightning. I'm going to pass. There's a Thopter Foundry to be aware of, a Carnosaur, an Oust, Liliana, maybe a Woodfall Primus. Maybe Silver Bluff Bridge comes back. I think the cards that will get taken, Oust and Carnosaur almost for sure. Yeah, it's kind of a weak pack. Maybe Garrick, maybe Liliana, maybe Triarch, I don't know. But I'll take Chain Lightning here. And then, oh, third pick, Fiery Confluence. I do love a Fiery Confluence. And now that we have Chain Lightning plus Fiery Confluence in our first three picks, we can also slant Aggressive as well. And aggressive red creatures, maybe, uh, you know, a couple counters if we're lucky. So I'm going to take Fiery Confluence, Passing up a Deluge, a Sentinel, Frantic Search, Spire Bluff, Goldspan, Tamiyo, Green Suns, Prismatic Ending. This is actually a pretty strong pack. I like that I'm taking the best card out of it. Though I think Frantic Search is going to go, and I really hope Spire Bluff comes back. But I think Frantic Search and Deluge are very likely to be gone. And I think Sentinel or Green Suns, one of those two is going to be taken by a Green Drafter. But past that, Savai Triumph might hit someone. Like BK might take Savai Triumph. He, he loves Triumphs. Um, so we'll see. All right. So in a three on three, I really don't think Time Spiral is the pick, especially since I have all these good aggressive cards. I think I'm just going to take Smuggler's Copter. I do like Tide Tidebinder as well. It's a pretty good one. But Smuggler's Copter and drafting some creatures seems like a pretty good plan to me. Plus it's colorless, which is nice. I might end up in a spot where I'm splashing Ancestral. So, I mean, obviously I'd like to be red blue at this point. There is... Not any guarantee that that can happen. But I'll take Copter, pass a Tidebinder, a Spar's Headquarters, Ramanop, Absent, obviously Time Spiral, and Deep Cavern Bat. So I'm probably not getting anything out of this pack when it comes back around. Oh, there's the Sword of the Meek. Well, passing Thopter Sword is, is, is a little risky, but I think I'm going to take Malevolent Hermit. I need to switch the art on this. You can you can choose art when you make your cube Cobra, which is what I, I use to keep the cube. And I just accidentally picked the wrong art. It's all this weird, dark, the midnight release one. But anyways, this card's perfect for what I want. It's an aggressive two drop. It disrupts your opponent. Cruise Copter. Pass BK, Delighted Halfling. And you know what? I, bet, I wouldn't be surprised if Mac got the Thopter. But all right, I'll take Hermit. I think that's better than Unruly Crasis and Blood Crypt, though it is kind of close. Here... Hmm, this is kind of interesting too. I don't want like Through the Breach or Portal, but Figure of Destiny, it's going to be a little rough on the mana. That is a little tough because I don't have any fixing yet. I could take a Red Green Surveil Land. That just sounds way too weak. Aurelia's Vindicator is also a pretty good card. I've been impressed with this one, but you know what? I think I'll just take the figure and see if I can make the mana work. Okay, Malcolm and Fiery Islet both came back. I kind of feel like I'm supposed to take Fiery Islet just for mana purposes. Malcolm is good, but in a red-blue deck, it's it, it's just a good card. It's not a great card. And then Cobra didn't get taken, neither did Shieldred's Edict. I think Cobra, Shieldred's Edict, Malcolm, Black Cleave Cliffs, maybe Ashen Rider or Mindstone get taken. Firestorm and Displacer Kitten could come back, though Malcolm's not zero to come back either. And yeah, this pack that wasn't great continues to not be great. I passed through the Breach. Maybe I should just cut the Primus. BK might have taken through the Breach. There's also a blue-green Talisman. I don't care about that. I think I'll just take Woodfall Primus because I don't think Max that likely to be on that. And I don't know. Maybe I can get a Flash too, but I will see. Oh, so no one's drafting green. 
Deluge and Sentinel and Green Suns are still here. I'm just going to take Mana Confluence. I'm the aggro deck. I am the one who knocks, so I don't care about my life total so much. And I don't mind passing BK a Toxic Deluge. Maybe I'm cutting him on blue then. I didn't pass, well, I haven't passed any blue. I don't know. I haven't really passed any blue or red, so I'm not really sure what's going on. We'll have to we'll have to see over the next couple picks. Spar's headquarters came back, sort of memory jar. I'm not really into either. I don't think he's playing black, but maybe I cut collected brutality. Or I just take Spar's headquarters, because who knows where you're gonna go mana-wise. The other option would be to take Jar, but I'd only really play Jar if I pick up like Hole Breacher, I think. Um, so hate collective brutality, take a speculative spar as headquarters, or take a speculative jar. I guess I'll just spec on spar as headquarters. That could be a hate draft too. Oh, wow. Unruly Crasis is awesome. But I kind of like my lane. I guess I have a mana confluence in a spar as headquarters. I think maybe I'm more likely to want the Crasis than Blood Crypt. I don't want Mana Morphos, I don't think. I guess it's good with Figure. And I don't really want a Delighted Halfling. Maybe I'm hooking BK up, but I guess either way I'm passing a good green card. All right, I'll take the Crasis. If the mana works out, oh, there's a Commercial District. Yeah, all right, I could be I could be Teamer. You know what, maybe I just take the Lotus Cobra now. I don't really care about Firestorm or Mindstone. All right, I guess maybe this Figure of Destiny is out. Spar's Headquarters in. I have... Actually, a kind of a lot of lands here. I have a red-green land, a red-blue land. Um, I guess I'll take Garrick. I think that's better than Tough Cookie. Oh, and a last pick, Green Suns. Okay. I guess I'll just audible into green. I mean, I'm just getting completely hooked up in green. So, seems reasonable. Oh, that's how... Oh, and a Mox Jet. I almost misclicked there. You saw that? that? I've done that before. If you move your mouse around, it's a, a bit rough. But, uh, yeah, we'll slam Mox Jet here. So... Passing Strider, a Xander's Lounge, a Flame Slash, a Probe, Inquisition, Bone Crusher. I might get Hex Drinker back. It's possible BK also switched into green late, which would still be good for me. Because <laughs> I would still get to cut him off. All right. Well, let's take the Mox Jet and figure things out from there. What's going to come back? Hex Drinker might, Stomping Ground might. We'll see. Here... Uh, we've got Verdant Catacombs. I, I like Subtlety, but I've got to take Verdant if I'm going to try to play all these, because it gets Spar's Headquarters and Commercial District. Really glad I took this Headquarters. Also, with a Verdant, it's possible that I could make my way... Um, making my way downtown into Domain. I think I'll take Verdant, pass up Subtlety, Reprieve, Retrofitter, Wheel, Teferi. Maybe Wheel, get Pick Your Poison back, or Copperline Gorge. I mean, this is a pretty decent pack, so I'd imagine I'd get one of those back. All right, so... See where we're at with our mana here. We've got here. I got to make a little more room because we've got Spar's headquarters and district as fetchables, a verdant, and then two non-fetchable lands. Whoa! Swords to plowshares and mind twist and parallax wave and Othari. White is a color that I'm not in right now. I think I'm just gonna take Misty here. My card quality is I think pretty high. I also have Lotus Cobra. It's really good with fetches. This must have been a nuts pack for this to all be here, pack three. And then I'm passing Strider two great white cards, which hopefully Charles takes the other one, though actually three if you count Othari. But Parallax Wave and Swords are both much better than Othari, so not uh, not too much of a comparison. Here, well, probably BK is not playing the Sneak Breach stuff. This pack is pretty bad for me because I don't really want Grim Monolith. I don't really want No More Lies. Noise Marine isn't like crazy. Tranquil Frillback, so three mana, three, three. And I can blow up artifacts for enchantments, exile graveyards, or gain life. Could also take Stunt Double, but that doesn't look like the strongest either. This pack is just kind of a miss. All the good cards in it are white. There's Loran, No More Lies, Touch the Spirit Realm, or Grim, which is just expensive. I guess I just take Grim. I'm really not going to play it. I mean, I kind of have a lot of white sources. Maybe No More Lies is actually fine. I have four white sources without trying. All right. I think there's a chance I might want that. I don't know. Oh, now there's a Ketria Triome. That seems like a pretty nice duel to have in this color combination. And maybe Botanical Sanctum or Stormseeker come back. But I'm going to take Ketria Triome. Wow. <laughs> Hallowed Fountain, Taiga, and Caracas. I mean, I've got to take Caracas. This card is really, really strong. 
weird draft. Uh, we're definitely in the market for domain cards, we, which is nice because we haven't really seen many. So if Territorial Kavu or Brawler or Sign of Draco show up, I'll be happy. Taiga, Taiga would be pretty good here. Hold on. Let me see. Taiga makes Verdant and Misty into untapped red, which currently they're not. Hallowed is less of an issue, even with that no more lies. But Caracas is also just a really strong card. There's also Skull Clamp, which I guess is good with the Hermit, but I don't really want Skull Clamp. Um, I think I'm just supposed to take Caracas. I think the, the upside of the card is too high. Oh, now there's a Stomping Ground and there's a Probe, but I th I'm kind of wanting Flame Slash. I just took a ton of lands here. There's also Bone Crusher. Maybe Bone Crusher is even better, actually. Bone Crusher is pretty good. All right, let's just take Bone Crusher. Probably get something back out of that pack, too. And now I could take Subtlety, or I could take Copperline Gorge. I don't want to take Gemstone Mine. Mm, I don't have very much blue. I mean, I'm still going to want to play blue, and I think pack three, I'll, I'll probably pick up a decent amount of blue. So I could see taking Subtlety here. It's a pretty nice card. It's great with Ancestral. I think between Revoker, Pick Your Poison, Gemstone Mine, Copperline Gorge, I'll get something back. So I'll just take Subtlety. It's also a really strong card. I prefer not to play against it. And then here I could take Rampaging Raptor because it's a nice beatdown creature. I don't think I'm a name sticker goblin gamer here. Wall of Roots really doesn't fit with anything I'm doing. Urbrask's Forge is kind of nice. Oh man, this is good with Skull Clamp. I haven't gotten that combo together, but that is good. I, I still kind of want... Oh, well, maybe I want the Forge over to Raptor. I could see that, yeah. I just, it's a little bit easier to cast, though I guess I'll have plenty of red. And it's a, a three drop. I have a couple fours already. Okay. Well, interesting pack here. Now, wow, Lauren, Lauren Wield and I have Caracas. All right, I'm just going to take Lauren. We're, we're full domaining at this point. I guess I don't have any black cards yet, but... I've got everything else, and these packs have been pretty juicy. This is going to be a high-power uh, six-player draft. Also, I've opened two pieces of power already, so I have a high-power deck in and of itself. Really glad that Spar's headquarters pick worked out. <laughs> um, still not quite there on the Green Suns. I'll, I'll take Sir Ginger here. I don't really like Oracle that much. And Exploration, it's not really an Exploration deck, and I can't cast Archfiend to the draw, so let's just take... I think that's the good two drop. I guess I have a little acceleration. No, maybe Oracle's actually fine. Maybe this time Oracle's good. Oh, Taiga came back. Amazing. Sorry, Bonehorde Dracosaur. I need my Taiga. Esper Sentinel's probably not going to be good. But I don't really think I'm going to play Monstrous Rage, so I'll just hate the Esper Sentinel in case Strider's playing white. And now Gemstone Mine or Undercity Sewers. I have three tap lands already. I do kind of like having a black land to fetch, though, in the last pick Wall of Roots that I'm still probably not playing. Okay. Well, this is a great pack, too. See if I can open some power. <laughs> I kind of did. Demonic Tutor is fantastic. Atroxa pack three is a little bit tougher. DT, when you have Ancestral, is pretty nice. Gut is also really nice. I don't think BK is playing red, though. The Flame Slash plus Bone Crusher wield, a late Taiga wield. I kind of think I just take DT. I think he definitely could be playing black, so... Let's take DT, passing Atroxa and Gut. So, like, if he's Reanimator, he'll get something no matter what. Let's see, Atroxa, Spell Pierce, Watery Grave, Gut, and maybe Indothatrium or Sylvan are going to go. I'll maybe get Fairy Mastermind back. All right. That's acceptable. I find that to be acceptable. Took three beta cards. Pick one, pack one. You love to see that. Oh, and here's a Lutri, but there's also two awesome uh, initiative creatures, and... I think I take the Caves of Chaos Adventure. I have more red sources, and BK passed that pack with Plow and Parallax Wave, so I don't think he's going to be able to... Well, he'll be able to play Season Dungeon if he wants to. It's pretty splashable, but I don't think he'll be play, be able to play it quite as easily. So I'll take Caves of Chaos Adventure here, past Lutri and Dungeoneer. And then next pick... Oh, there's the Dread Horde for Chain Lightning and Ancestral. I'm not taking Dread Horde here. I think that would be crazy. I'm just looking at which... Basically, because that'll, that'll wheel which other card I want. And it's between Luminarch and Badlands. And I think I'm just going to take Badlands. I, I can pick up some playables if I need to. And being able to splash this DT is nice. Plus, there's three more picks that could have some domain cards here. There's also Titania. 
With two fetch lands and a fiery islet, Titania is not too bad. And Caracas to bring her back. Hmm. Or maybe, and actually, maybe the Luminarch is good. Luminarch is a really, really good card. I, because I, at this point, I could cut Garrick, Oracle, and Green Suns, and still have some green, but maybe not that much low green. Um. Actually, I don't care about the Badlands. I'm gonna take Luminarch here. There's Fast Bond. Not, not really into Fast Bond. Oh, I'm gonna take Pest Infestation. That card's busted. There's also Jace, which would be really nice in my Chain Lightning Ancestral DT Fiery Confluence deck. But this pack's so juiced. I'm gonna take Pest Infestation, and I think Snuff Out, maybe Fast Bond, Seed Shark or Jace, and maybe Nissa or Scarlet goes. But no matter what, I'm gonna get something back, and I'm not passing a Pest Infestation. Oh, there's Strip Mine, fifth pick, and Oko. Wow, I just passed Titania. What a wild draft. Everyone's decks are going to be so sick. So even though my deck is sick because I open Ancestral and Jet and just have a good deck, I, everyone's going to have good decks. It's not, not you know, this is a higher power level than normal for a three on three. Uh, I kind of feel like I'm supposed to take Oko here. Oko's a pretty messed up card. And if I had taken Titania, I would just take the strip, but I'll just take Oko. <laughs> Cannoneer is not what I'm into. I have two fetches. Can I take Death Right or will it wheel? I might just take. No, I don't want Rafine's Tower. I have so many tap lands already. Maybe I just do take the Death Right. <sighs> I'm not going to get any fetches. No domain cards. What uh, what a beat. No Leyline Binding. No Territory Kavu. No Sinai Draco. No Nishoba. Um, I mean, I like a Crow in War too, but I don't think this is a Utopia Sprawl deck so much. I think I'd rather take Death Right here, though maybe I just take the, the Bitter Triumph and try to wheel the Death Right. No one's gonna take Death Right. Bitter Triumph's really good. Okay, Sylvan came back, but we might be in watery grave territory at this point. Mm, yeah. I mean it makes Misty into black. It makes Verdant oh, it makes Verdant into untapped blue, which it currently isn't. Okay, yeah, watery grave over uh more tap lands. And then now Oh, there's the sign. I just completely blanked on it earlier. Well, I'm gonna take it. Sign is Awesome, it's exactly what I'm looking for here. I must have gotten so excited uh, about whatever I was taking that I didn't see Scion. So everyone who's yelling at me, <laughs> you can stop yelling now, I, I see the Scion. I don't think I'm gonna play this Green Suns Oracle. I could play Esper Sentinel, I don't, I don't know that I'm going to. All right, we got a couple more picks here. Currently, <laughs> I do need some playables. Oh, Titania came back. So whoever took Strip Mine didn't take Titania. I think I'm into Titania now. I don't care about Imperial Seal or Night's Whisper or Lingering Souls. Yeah, I'll, I'll play Titania as an expensive card. I don't mind it. Don't think Strip Mine's going to come back. <laughs> um, is this subtlety good? I've got one, two, three, four blue cards. It's not looking great. But now that I picked up Titania, it makes me want Oracle a little bit more. I don't still don't really want Wall of Roots. This is 31 playables. Okay, Nissa came back. Fast Bond came back. Huh. Could I be a Fast Bond deck? I have DT and Ancestral. I have Cobra that's not bad with. I've got Oracle and Titania it's like kind of good with. It's that or just take Nissa. I kind of feel like with Mox and Cobra, maybe I just take the Nissa here. No, I'll, I'll take Fast Bond. I, I think I could make a Fast Bond deck work and then at that point, I'll take an Elvish Mystic because we're turn one in green. And then do I take Utopia Sprawl? Well, what's my mana going to look like? Two turn one green sources, three, some tapped green sources, all, all, all forests. Or I could just take Waterlog Grove. I kind of just like taking Waterlog Grove. Oh, wow. This is actually a nice Sylvan deck now. And I don't think I need the Trium or the Backstreet. If no one wanted Thassa's Oracle before, they don't want it now. Oh, and I'll play a Blooming Marsh. All right, well, wild deck here, but I think we think we got it to a pretty good spot. Let, let's go to deck building. All right, this is a kind of nice one. I, my mana is actually great. With two fetches, two triumphs, mana confluence, and a bunch of duels, I actually think I ended up with pretty good mana. <laughs> Ultimately, I ended up cutting Luminarch and Sanguine Evangelist. I think in, and I didn't, didn't really consider Esper Sentinel. I think the aggressive white creatures, I'm going to get tapped white so often off Spar's headquarters that I don't really think 
that is a good plant though i like no more lies because having that up in the mid game seems reasonable and i wanted i did want to play subtlety and that's another blue card to pitch to it i am playing loran as well got fast bond elvish mystic as ramp and lotus cobra have a bunch of just powerful cards of all colors and uh pretty good fixing this is just a good five color deck though <laughs> i think that my deck is awesome and i think it might be the third best deck on the team maybe second because here's Mac. He opened Mox Pearl and Time Walk. That's how we got those like nuts fifth pick strip mine Oko packs with Urza Saga that can also get Skull Clamp Mana Vault Retrofitter. He got the Dungeoneer. He got the Othari. He has Gut, Inti, Stoneforge Mystic for Batter Skull and Skull Clamp. This deck is awesome. So me or Mac's deck's probably the second, we're the second and third best deck on the team because Charles. Charles has really done it. Charles has a Lurus Companion deck with Mind Twist, Force of Will, Mind Warp, Snuff Out. Fire Covenant, Wheel of Fortune. But here's where it gets good. He has Thopter Foundry Sword. He has Bowmasters, Deep Cavern Bat, him, Turok, him and Turok. Dothy Voidwalker, Snapcaster, Phantasm Image, Unearth, Ragavan, Flame Slash, Inquisition, Spell Pierce, and a bunch of duels. This is a high power level draft, but I gotta feel like my team is significantly far ahead. We opened a ton of power and our decks just look awesome. Let's get to the games. All right, time for round one against Updraft Elemental and... So I'm a Lutri, of course. Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep this hand. This hand has seven mana sources, but but hear me out. Hear me out. Uh, I've got Commercial District to Surveil. <clears throat> oh, Plains. We know that Updraft has Shieldred and Dak Faden, so I thought they were on Grixis. Uh, but anyways, I've got Surveil plus two Sack Lands, and I have Elvish Mystic. Uh, I think Mac has the mana tie. I, I just don't want to play Mox Jet very much. And... Uh, if I don't draw spells, I can go Surveil, and then I can start cracking these. And I just have such good acceleration that any spell I draw, I think, will be fairly strong. So I like keeping this hand, even though, obviously, it is a bit heavy on the mana sources. Don't mind drawing Fiery Confluence, but we'll see what kind of deck we're playing against. Oh, we're playing this red-white aggro? Okay, Updraft might have switched it around. Well, that makes this Fiery Confluence better, that's for sure. Okay, let's go Commercial District... Oh yeah, that was the card I was actually hoping to draw this turn, but that's fine. And I will block Intrepid Adversary with Elvish Mystic if that is what I need to do. I'm not too concerned about getting the acceleration off the self. Actually, what I really hope happens here is Updraft spends a card killing the Elvish Mystic. out of Because they don't want me to block uh, the Intrepid Adversary and maybe afraid of my ramp. And then that means I get more cards out of this Fiery Confluence here. Yep, cast into the fire and getting hit. And then I'm going to play the Krasis, and that's going to, again, prompt either a removal spell or a no attack. What I'm hoping happens is Updraft just plays another creature, and then I can go Fiery Confluence, kill both your creatures, nug you, and attack with Krasis. Something along those lines would be ideal. And then my hand has a bunch of lands that find me spells. So I've got another Surveil land and the Fiery Islet and Waterlog Grove. Drawing Titania would be awesome. Demonic Tutor, Ancestral Recall. Fast Bond actually wouldn't be that bad here because I would go Fast Bond, Surveil, Islet, Waterlog Grove, and get to do some things. Okay. We chilling over there? Okay. I mean, if I don't draw anything... I actually kind of want to play Waterlogged Grove here because I'm going to level up the Krasis this turn or Monstrousify it or whatever. This is uh, Adapt. <laughs> and then send for seven. Even though I take three back. Oh, am I getting pathed? Sure. All right. And here, I guess I actually do want to play. All right. The reason I wanted to play the Waterlog Grove is I have all these land drops I need to make to get <laughs> to get cards out of them. Like if I played Mountain that, that turn, I then would next turn be able to play Undercity Sewers and not <laughs> be able to have Sack Waterlog. Now I can go Sewers, Sack Waterlogged if I want. Okay, well, whatever this is, I'm probably going to try to kill it with Fiery Confluence. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought it was. All right, I'll take 6 down to 10 here. The path was pretty good. So... Let's hope I draw some spells from here. Hmm. Subtlety is not bad. I still have to cast this Fiery Confluence. Let's see. And I don't have enough mana to do both. 
Let's just play the Undercity Sewers and see what's up. And then I'm going to go Fiery Confluence, Nug both those. Sign of Draco. <clears throat> okay. I'm going to put that on top. I think I still just go Fiery Confluence. I think it's too risky to play Scion. I could crack the Waterlog Grove and play Scion this turn. But I think that uh, that would just put me into basically dead to a removal spell. I don't really see a reason to do that. And the Scion is nice because now, assuming Updraft plays a creature this turn, hopefully I can go Scion, leave up Subtlety. Scion blocks their creature. Subtlety gets their next play. But what they play this and next turn is obviously going to be pretty big. So we're up one card on all these, two cards if you count the planes, actually, on all these exchanges, the the, the path on the Krasis, and then that, oh, Black Lotus, okay. High power draft, like I said. Let's hope this isn't too ridiculous. Just put L Lutri in hand. That would be nice. Oh, Adeline, okay. Adeline's fine. And what do you got next? Flicker Wisp? Oh, that doesn't actually do anything. Okay, so I am going to sack the Waterlog Grove because I'll have enough mana to do all the things. All right, draw Scion. Sylvan Library. So let's go Scion. And I think just play the Mountain here. I don't think I want to tap Fiery Islet. I really need a <clears throat> Updraft not to have a removal spell here. I need them to have a creature that I can subtlety because that will put me in a pretty good shape to stabilize. No, 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 this isn't Swords to Plowshares, I hope. Oh, Cycle Eagles, okay. That's acceptable. Touch the Spirit Realm would be bad. Because, I mean, if I'm forced to go subtlety, block the Flicker Wisp, and then take three off Adeline or four off Adeline, plus the token... It doesn't sound very fun, but they might want to go creature to pump Adeline enough here. Oh, Aurelia's Vindicator. Okay, that's annoying, but I do get to subtlety it. And then I get to crack Fiery Islet and then play Sylvan and hope to find a little bit of action here. I'd imagine this is going on top, but we'll see. I mean, it's a pretty good card, and this game doesn't look like it's going to resolve anytime soon, so it would actually be crazy to put it on the bottom here, unless your hand is like a good five drop, maybe. Yeah, they put it on top, and it was indeed Aurelius Vindicator. <laughs> Can't attack here, so don't even bother. Okay, draw. Time for a spell, I think. That's a spell. Let's go Islet and draw a card. That's not a spell. Um, Sylvan. Pass the turn, I think. Updraft's going to play the Vindicator, and I get to Chain Lightning the Vindicator. That sounds good to me. Okay. Could attack with Adeline and trade for Sign of Draco. I would be okay with that if that's what has to happen. The only thing is that makes that kind of crazy is like, what if I just have a removal spell, like I bitter triumph the flicker wisp and then Adeline dies for nothing? Yeah, this is actually kind of a, a wild attack here. Like, what if this was a, you know, a lightning bolt instead of a chain lightning? You just lose it all. I guess the hope is that I don't have a spell in hand, but... I think this is like a really risky play for no reason. Because like the net result you get is you traded Adeline for Sign of Draco, but I don't think that that's worth the risk of uh, <laughs> getting owned here, but it's all right. So now I could pay life. I think what I want to do here is I want to go Chain Lightning and pay and leave up Bitter Triumph. I'll go to six here. Land, <clears throat> Chain Lightning, the Aurelius Vindicator. And I'm going to keep this Mana Confluence in hand in order to uh, <laughs> be able to cast Bitter Triumph. Actually, no, I'm, is there a 26? I'm not going to Bitter Triumph the Flicker Wisp. I'll just trade the subtlety for it. I'll save Bitter Triumph for like a Bonehorde Dracosaur or like, I don't know, something just 
big that I can't deal with otherwise. Okay. Yeah, this works fine. You have one card in hand. All right, so now attack with both. Uh, subtlety blocks Death Greeter. Discard a card to kill the Flicker Wisp. Okay. All right, so we're down to nothing, and I think I'm just going to Pest Infestation here unless my uh, Sylvan reveals something <laughs> something else. I'm not going to... I'm not that interested in going to two life. Um, yeah, I'll put these on top. And I'll cast Pest Infestation. Zero targets. One, two, three. All right. Make six one ones. So now... Unless Updraft plays a flyer, I feel like I'm in really good shape here. And hopefully they don't. Because I, it's going to be almost impossible to kill me on the ground. Also, if they play an artifact or enchantment and I can lore in it, like that would obviously be great. <laughs> Danto Vanguard is not going to do anything. Okay. What is this? Prismatic ending the Sylvan. Ah, uh, that's fine. I think that a uh, prismatic ending the Sylvan doesn't really matter too much to me. No cards in hand. Let's just attack for four, and then pass the turn. I think I don't want to play Loren. <sighs> yeah, I think I can wait. I'm drawing a Lotus Cobra. The thing is, I don't really want to tap Loren to have us each draw a card. Also, updraft's due to draw a few lands here. I'm just going to say, it's turn 11, they're on four lands. So, they've got a lot of lands. Like, half their deck is lands. Like, assuming they're playing 16 lands Eagles. Yeah, they got a lot of lands left. They do have a, Lu a Lutri still to get. So, they might have even wanted to wait on Prismatic Ending. Though, I guess Prismatic Ending Lutri. No, you can, you can, you can copy it and it's pretty good. All right, hopefully, this is just Lutri going into hand. And not something else savage. I just think the Lauren is not going to do that much right here. So, but we'll see. Next turn I'm drawing a Lotus Cobra. If you attack with Vanguard, I block with a Pest. You pay four life, I gain a life. So it goes 18 to 7. I can attack with Pest, you to 14, play a Lotus Cobra. I think it works out kind of nicely. All right, I like going down this path. This 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 works for me. And meanwhile, I, on the other hand, I have 18 lands total because I have 17 and a mox. And I have drawn 8, 9, 10, 11. So, <laughs> so I have 7 lands left out of 19 cards, and I think they have 12 lands left out of 23 cards. But we'll see. Okay. That exchange was, in fact, done. And... Lutri into hand, and no no land play. Okay. Here I'll play Cobra, and attack with four pests again, leaving one pest back. I think that's fine. If oh Updraft can't even really cast the Lutri. <laughs> that's funny. It doesn't have double red. It's also going to be really hard for them to copy a red spell, given that situation. And white spells are generally less less dangerous. Okay, there's double red. Still can't copy much. I am going to be able, not able to attack with the pests anymore, but the Sedanto Vanguard situation I don't think is really going to work. Like, Basically, you want to pay eight life to kill two pests or pay four life per pest. It's just not a great exchange, but I'm happy with it. All right, and now I get to get to see a new card here next turn. I do like that. Okay. Action. Yeah, that's action, in fact. <laughs> so killing the Sylvan worked out pretty well for Updraft. I would have had that many turns earlier. Um, I could Titania or I could Caves of Chaos Adventure. Titania puts two 5-3s into play. I kind of like titania here. Oh, actually, can I do both? Oh, I can just do both. Hold on. If I go Titania, I haven't used a fetch. 
I'll take one damage off the Caves of Chaos Adventure, or I could go Caves of Chaos Adventure. Oh, I guess I can go Caves of Chaos Adventure. Titania is actually better. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Do I have an, I have an island left in my deck to get? Okay. No. I, I don't have any basics left. Oh, let me just check to make sure. But yeah. Okay. So good thing I checked. So let's go Titania first then. Put the waterlogged grove into play. I think that's uh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter which one. They're both the same thing. Um Do I want to cast a Caves of Chaos Adventure? Let me think about this. Oh, Pyrokinesis Exiling Lutri killing those two. I guess I won't be casting Caves of Chaos Adventure. Oh, this makes the okay, this makes the, the pest attacks make a lot more sense. I, I gotta I gotta give updraft credit for that. Let's draw a card. Maybe I'll draw something relevant. All right. But now I think we're just in almost can't lose territory. I mean the Pyrokinesis Lutri is a great combo, but oh updraft was really hoping to draw a red card. Wow. Cause then you get to play Lutri and do that. Peril X Wave. Well, I'm glad I saved the Loran. <laughs> okay, I go to five here. I still think I am in great shape, and they've got all lands left in their deck. They still haven't drawn a land in like five turns. <laughs> oh, that, that locks it up. All right. Let's send with the uh, Pest Token here. Guess I'm glad I didn't uh, play the Chaos of Chaos Adventure. I think that would have turned out worse. Okay, I, I think this is a good play to use the Parallax Wave here to some degree. And let's go Loran, blow up Parallax Wave. You get to nug the Pest Token. And that means that uh, Updraft doesn't have Swords to Plowshares, which is nice. And you can flicker the Vanguard if you want. It doesn't really do anything. And then here, six... I'm going to stomp the Adonto Vanguard here and then just play Bone Crusher. Oh, okay. That, that's fair. I don't think... Mac has the Othari. I don't really think there's like one card that... I guess maybe a Bone Horde Dracosaur this turn could, could be a problem, but... All right. Oof, what a game one. All right. Sideboard... This kind of makes me want, like, Wall of Roots, Green Sun Zenith. I don't really want No More Lies, I don't think. Just because, like, I'm not going to... I'm worried I won't be able to keep that mana up. Um, it kind of doesn't make me want to want, want Fast Bond quite as much. But it is kind of nice to... To just be able to get a slightly faster start. I'm also somewhat interested in the Sanguine Evangelist. Maybe I just take the Fast Bond out and I use Wall of Roots for that instead. Uh, maybe the Green Suns isn't even good then. Maybe I just play Sanguine Evangelist. All right, yeah, I think I'll try that on the draw here. All right, on the draw. No, this, this five land hand I'm not keeping. This hand's just way too slow. Oh, this looks much better. Let's keep this. And I actually think I can put Taiga back. What are the odds that Updraft has a one drop I want to kill? I think I'm willing to take the risk. Getting a Surveil is pretty big. And I should be able to just go turn one, Commercial District, turn two, kill your thing. But yeah, there we go. Greed pays off once again. Uh, yeah, definitely have to play Commercial District. <clears throat> well, I guess I, I'm, I, I wasted my Surveil. It's okay. I, I, I'll allow it. And then I'm going to go turn two, Undercity Sewers. Hopefully Chain Lightning something. Not a Dunto Vanguard, please. Intrepid Adversary would be much more preferable. Adonto Vanguard is pretty good against uh, <laughs> Chain Lightning. All right. Very nice. I could also not kill this thing. I do have Sanguine Evangelist. I take three. I, I feel like my hand is pretty good. I don't need to mess around with that. I don't know. I'm taking guaranteed three if I do that. Oh, DT, I'll put that on top. It's a little slow, but... Further cements my decision to chain lightning here. I feel like I'll have time if I go Sanguine Evangelist this turn. I guess I'll be annoyed if Updraft plays a Flicker Wisp here. Strip Mine. Okay. 
glimmer lens, and then what are we strip mining? Which land do you kill? They're all so tempting. <laughs> it's actually kind of funny. I don't I don't know which one they want to kill. It's kind of annoying because I wanted to be able to sanguine evangel or uh, Loran the glimmer lens at some point. Though I guess I can't. I will be able to at some point. Oh, they're gonna feel like they made the wrong choice when I ancestral here. Though actually I could DT. What would I DT for in this situation? It wouldn't be a mox. I don't know. It's like I don't know what I want to DT for without ancestraling quite. But I also it spends more mana to DT. I think I just get it getting more information off ancestral is still gonna be better here. And then I guess I'm going to get Tygo with Verdant most likely. So I guess I'll just play Blooming Marsh because otherwise it'll be tapped next turn. Decent chance my, my, my play next turn is just Lauren because assuming Updraft plays another creature, I'm not going to want the Glimmer Lens to be out there. So I'd rather play Lauren than Sanguine Evangelist. Oracle might be okay here in a few turns. Strip mine's pretty good against my five color deck, I will say that. That I don't like to see. Okay. Oh man, and it triggers Glimmer Lens. What an absurd draw. All right. Well, I guess I'll take five. And you draw a card, nothing I can do about that. Okay. What do we draw in here? Wall of Roots, interesting. I could go Wall of Roots into DT. I really, I don't want to give Updraft another card here. Let's just play Lauren. Kill the Glimmer Lens. I can block the Rebel Token. I'll still take a little damage here, but it's not the end of the world. And then next turn, what am I tutoring for? I don't really have like... Like, Fiery Confluence is a kind of nice tutor target. I guess I've already used the Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning to kill the Stormseeker would be decent, but we'll see. It'll kind of depend on... Oh, no no new creature play this turn, and I get to block the Rebel. Okay. I mean, I might just DT for Bitter Triumph if Updraft doesn't make a play here. Like, it was just Lutri in hand here. Yeah, that flips the Stormseeker. Okay. I guess I'll just do that. Oh, now I draw that. Oh, I could flip Stormseeker back here. I kind of like that, actually. Let's get Taiga. Wall of Roots. Demonic Tutor. And at this point, what am I tutoring for? Mm, I've got some gas in hand still. I've already used my Ancestral. I could get the Bitter Triumph. feel like I should just get Titania. It's just... Yeah, that's got to be a lot better. All right, I'll get Titania, especially with Caracas here. And then I'll play an Elvish Mystic too for good measure. And then next turn, I can block the Wall of Roots on a Reckless Stormseeker because it's flipped back. And then I can go... Oh, uh, there's Lotus. I don't like seeing that. Wow. Okay. Parallax Wave. Oh, Sarah Paragon for the Lotus. Jeez. Well, drawing Lotus there is going to break the game open, as it looks, it turns out. Because I do have... I mean, I do have some... Some out... Some... A little bit of play here with this, like, Sanguine Evangelist, but I'm even taking four off the Sarah Paragon here. And there's like another play coming, so I really don't think I have much of a shot. Yeah, Lotus is good. There's a reason I think Lotus is better than Ancestral. I think if both those two cards go head to head, usually the Lotus is going to end up winning. Prismatic ending. Okay, into what? Into Noise Marine. Cascading into. At least Cast into the Fire is not very good here. And then Noise Marine comes in. And there's been a lot of spells cast. This nugs me for six spells. <laughs> uh, okay. That was a turn, I guess. And then I go to two here off the Sarah Paragon. 
or one sorry yeah all right let's draw and concede i suppose wow well without black lotus like none of that happens i i think I'm, I'm in fine shape but yeah black lotus is a good card go into game three all right i guess i know what we're hoping for in game three it's to, to not see black lotus do i want no more lies i, I really i'm not feeling like no more lies is going to be good i think wall of roots is though all right i i, I like how, what we've got here i'm ready to battle all right time for game three i'd like to play first and let's see what we got here caves of chaos adventure <laughs> this is why oracle's bad i actually think this is okay to keep because of undercity sewers if i find a, a play to make on turn two or three this hand i think goes pretty hard titania is really good like playing a five mana card that gives you two five threes because i have this fetch is a pretty big game but obviously this this could work out poorly i just don't think i don't think this is a mulligan though i'm regretting putting oracle Moldai in my deck as i always do i i i, I think i think i'm maybe just too optimistic if this was I don't really know if this, I guess if this was fast bond, this hand would be the nuts, but I wouldn't really have this fast bond in my deck and not play Oracle probably. Well, let's see what happens here. Okay, updraft mold to six, undercity sewers. Oh, there we go. Put DT on top. And then turn two, I can go Blooming Marsh and DT. Honestly, I'm probably just gonna DT for Mox Jet. Cause if I do that, I get to play all my cards a turn sooner. So let's just DT. It's got to be Mox Jet, right? Yeah. Pass the turn. And then I can go turn three. Oracle or Caves of Chaos Adventure. I mean, probably Oracle. The reason being, if <clears throat> Updraft has another creature here, then they can just take the initiative. And I don't really like the idea of that. Plus Oracle with a land drop left. Yeah, that's going to... I will be doing enough powerful stuff. I don't need the Caves of Chaos Adventure and uh, to to get ahead here. I, I will play this card, of course, probably like the turn after. But for right now, I think it's fine. What you got here? You going to make a play? Whenever my opponents who have Black Lotus in their deck start thinking really hard on an early turn, it all scares me that they're just they just got Black Lotus in their hand and they're like, hmm, how do I best utilize this, you know, boon of five mana on turn two here? But uh, hopefully that's not the, the, what's going on here. And Updraft is just deciding between two drops to play, but we'll see, we'll see. All right, Flooded Strain is getting cracked. Do they have a red-white duel? We haven't seen one yet, I don't think. But they have Flooded Strand. You'd probably play Flooded Strand in the deck anyway, just because of uh, Sarah Paragon. It's a nice little combo. So we'll see. No, their mana looks pretty bad. All right, maybe this is just deciding which two drop to play. Thalia. Oh, I got so punished for not playing Mox. Wow. What a beating. Okay. That... <laughs> now it's just going to look like I... Uh... <laughs> Like I tutored for Ancestral. All right, well, this works out fine. Uh, and Ancestral myself. And then Lanor Elf, Elvish Mystic. No, Lotus Cobra is not crazy. Let's let's just play the Mountain So because of Strip Mine. Next turn, I can go Cobra Titania. Is that right? Cobra, yep. All right, well... I like this. This looks a little better. Giver of Runes is going to be pretty annoying still, but at some point I'll just get to Chain Lightning it. And another Plains. And Lutri into hand? No, Glimmer Lens for three mana. Oh, that was the question, is which one to play here. Okay, well, I'm going to get to play a bunch of stuff now. Lotus Cobra. Misty. Crack Misty. Mmm... I guess I've got a lot of blue. I guess I'll just get forest. Add green. Wow, it can't even uh, can't even get me with pyrokinesis because of that Thalia, which is nice. Titania, and then we're gonna get probably Spara's headquarters with this. Oh, yeah, I could go up to three mana, but I don't actually need three. 
I think I'm just going to kill the giver of runes now with just chain lightning. And I can get a tap land because I don't have anything else to play. I think, huh, is it better to get commercial district or spar as headquarters? I've one white card in my deck and I have a Lotus Cobra. Oh, two white cards in my deck. I think I'll still just get commercial district. Just getting to surveil a, yeah, getting to put that into my graveyard was like drawing a card. It's just such a huge advantage. All right, get red. Red and chain lightning get rid of runes. All right. Uh, this looks pretty good to me. I mean, obviously, there's some powerful plays that uh, Updraft could make here. Like Pyrokinesis is pretty strong still, but next turn I can go Caves of Chaos, Adventure, and Oracle. Well, I can play Oracle first, even. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Is it bit, which one do I want to play first? That's kind of interesting. Because I guess if I play... So here's the thing. If I play Oracle and my top card is something awesome then I can choose not to play Caves of Chaos Adventure, I suppose. But I pretty much have to play Caves of Chaos Adventure, so I'd rather go Caves of Chaos Adventure than play Oracle. And the reason is, by playing Oracle, it makes it so that my top card is very unlikely to be a land on my next draw step. Because if, if it's a land, I'll play it. If it's not a land, then, you know, great. It's just going to be like a path on a Titania here. I mean, that seems like one of the better things you could do because having a Titania in play sounds pretty dangerous. <laughs> Just because, uh, I don't know, Updraft knows I've got some, like, sack lands and stuff like that. All right, no attacks, no plays. Interesting. All right. Upkeep path. Yeah, that's that's the right time to do it, I think. Oh, I'll get my planes. <laughs> now add a white and... Keep going here. <laughs> That'll be good, but I don't even need to play it right now. Let's go Caves of Chaos Adventure. Oh. Wait, I don't I can't play the Oh, I can play the Oracle. I just I just can't get a land. Yeah, that's fine. I have a land to play, that doesn't matter. No lands. Taiga. Add green, play Oracle. And my top card's a Sylvan. Um, I'll play a Watery Grave tapped. I know it doesn't, uh, I'm wasting a Lotus Cobra mana, but I think that's fine. And I think I send with the Elemental. They kill the Chaos of Chaos Adventure. Attack, no, I don't, I think I'll just wait. I don't, I don't need to do, to attack. <laughs> Sylvan plus uh, Oracle's a nice little combo. We're getting into, you need Black Lotus right now territory. Next turn, I'm going to get to put two plus one plus one counters on the Caves of Chaos Adventure. Though, actually, I might just put the counters on the Elemental token. We'll see. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Yeah, because what I think... Oh, actually, I'm going to put the counters on Oracle of Moldiah. Then I'm going to Fiery Confluence deal two to each creature. That is going to be awesome. Let's go to Forge. Oracle is buffed up. Oh, sure, I'll play Ketria Trium. Add a red. Cast this. Deals... Two damage to each creature, two damage to each opponent. And again, Thalia is protecting me from for now from from fiery conf or uh, from pyrokinesis, but I could have it now, but I don't think that's the case. Exile the wall of roots to play it next turn, and ba boom, we got him. Whew, that was quite the match. Updraft has a sick deck, uh, sick red white aggro with deck with like Thalia, Lotus, Path to Exile, Parallax Wave. But my deck's also pretty sick, and I drew pretty well. Playing against BK on Sneak Reanimator, so Caracas looks pretty good. And this hand is just good in general. A lot of white mana. Too much white mana in this hand. But uh, I'm going to get to go... I guess... Hmm. I'll see what I draw, but I'm definitely going to keep. But uh, I could play Turn 1 Spars Headquarters, Turn 2 Elvish Mystic, and that way I could sack Misty for Watery Grave to get black mana. Or I could play, uh, yeah, let's just play the Spars Headquarters. I just, I think sacking Misty to get Taiga is totally fine because I have a red card in hand also. But I just don't really need to have an Elf in play on turn two. I don't have a three drop in my hand. I have a four drop, so the curve works fine. Plus, it lets me wait on the Misty 
Because waiting on the Misty when I have Oracle is a really nice one. Okay. Oh, and I drew the Watery Grave. Elvish Mystic. Tapped Watery Grave. Let's see what you got, BK. Imperial Seals are a bit scary. So what I think I'm going to do here is... Well, I guess I should look exactly what BK's targets are. Let me see. Okay, he does have a Troxon stuff, but now I think this play is pretty easy. Because I go land, oracle, play Caracas. I actually can't play the mana confluence because I, I need to Caracas the Jace. Because I'm sure his plan involves using that Jace to loot. Well, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. Well, it's okay. We've got we've got some options here. We'll see what he reanimates. He can't reanimate a, a Troxa for quite the same level of effectiveness. If he has Shallow Grave and wants to hit me for seven and draw a bunch of cards, that's fine. Oh, man. Ashen Rider and a Troxa? Okay. Orgorio's Vengeancing. Hitting. Persist? Oh, gross. Sneak. Breach. <laughs> Kozilek. The problem is the Ashen Rider, Persist plus Ashen Rider, is going to make it so... I don't care which land he takes. Um, he's not going to take Regisaur either. So I think he's taking those. He's, he gets to kill my Caracas, which means he can breach Kozilek. Hmm. I'm just saying, could BK be luckier? All right, took the Blood Crypt, and he's going to get to persist it now. Uh, so he took Kozilek? Yeah, okay. Kills Caracas. I draw, well, at least I drew a land off the top. Uh, <laughs> let's go, do I want to draw Sylvan? I guess not really, right? I feel like Sylvan, Sylvan's a bit too slow. Let's just put Sylvan in my graveyard. Oh, Titania. Okay, that one I don't mind so much. <clears throat> Pass. And I kind of hope he sneaks in Kozilek this turn. Because I'm taking some damage off this Ashen Rider. But maybe he doesn't have the red mana for that. Maybe he just has Sneak Go. Because I feel like if he had Kozilek, oh, he's going to Fury me too. Oy, oy, oy. Pitching Sneak. All right. I'm at nine. And he could have breached, but didn't. Um, land. Go to eight. Get Taiga, Titania. Get Misty Rainforest here, or try to. All right, pass the turn. So let's see, I go to four from this Ashen Rider. I guess I'm gonna just do this now. Seven. I mean, this is actually kind of close. If I can find a way to not die to Ashen Rider, then maybe I've got a chance here because I get I get to attack for 10 and then fiery confluence I guess but Ashen Rider is just going to kill me do I have any outs to the Ashen Rider I mean I'll just find out when I draw but I'm just curious subtlety can chump it Oko sign of Draco can trade because it's a 4-4 four four. all right I guess I do have some outs I've got to hope he's got nothing here which he might no, this doesn't look like nothing. <laughs> That's not nothing at all. What the heck? I was already dead. Oh, and then I drew DT. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's attack and see if he blocks. He saw the line. All right. Well, that was a sick game. He, he, he did a lot. I did a lot. I mean, I had a lot of good answers, but he still got me good. Uh... This is probably going to be a tough matchup. I definitely want no more lies. Definitely want fast bond. 
Lauren, oh, kill Sneak. I kind of got to keep that. All right, in that case, and Malevolent Hermit's going to be good too. I don't really even see anything in my sideboard that I really want, so let's get in there. All right, time for game two. Mm, this hand seems way too slow. Well, I can't mulligan this. I guess I'll put Fiery Islet back and keep Mana Confluence and then pass. All right, Mox Jet. Any Mox Jets? Let's see if we can get there. Uh, no, but there's a Watery Grave. I guess I'll just play that since I don't have anything better to do. And then turn three. I think I play the Oko. It's going to be my plan here. Oh, no More Lies is kind of nice. That's like one of the cards I really want to draw against him. All right, so now if, if he doesn't reanimate this turn, uh, this is tricky. Let's see what he does, I guess. Oh, sure. I mean, I can't keep No More Lies up with no pressure in play. That's just not, not a winning strategy. But if he's going to get me on turn three, the oh, he didn't. He discarded two lands. Okay. I'm in for that. That is fine. Um, interesting. Could he have sneak next turn? I don't know. I'm just going to play Oracle, I think. And see. Oh, Waterlog Grove. All right. Oh, now he can't play a turn four sneak. He sees the or the Loran, so he knows he can't do it. But if he just waits till turn five, then I have no more lies up. And... Uh, Lies up, and then he's he's in trouble. I mean, he's kind of got to do something right now. Shieldred doesn't do it because of Oko. If he has another way to discard and like can put an Atroxen to play this turn or something, like sure, that would be not ideal. A uh, fatal push the Oracle. All right, that I don't I don't care about at all. Make a food. Make an unruly crisis. This crisis is extremely unruly. And then next turn is just lethal. Unruly crisis is so good. Just getting to, I mean, if he taps out for something and I and I mana leak it, I then get to. No, no, no more lies, BK. Enough with the enough with the lies. <clears throat> All right, uh, let's go to game three here. We've got. Uh, a tough road ahead of us. Just on the draw, I've got one counterspell in my deck with subtlety as kind of a pseudo second counterspell. Uh, oh, and, and maybe Malevolent Hermit. I have very few ways to interact with his plan, and he's pretty fast. So this matchup's going to be bad, which is typically how BK is going to defeat me. Is just unfavorable matchups, you know. <laughs> All right, on the draw, let's see. Um, Chain Lightning's not even good against him. It kills Jace. I kind of feel like I can mulligan. I just want to find a fast bond or uh, mox hand. I'm going to keep this hand. I'll put sign of Draco on the bottom. We're pretty far from that. I mean, if I can find a green source here, I don't hate this play. All right. I guess I got to put commercial district on top. Just because at this point, the only way I could speed things up is if I bend it and drew an untapped green, which I guess I'll get to see now. Uh, I'll put Lauren in my graveyard. And uh, I don't really like where I'm at. Mox, 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 no. Plains, Elvish Mystic. I think that's better than playing Fast Bond. Pass the turn. Leave up Bitter Triumph if I care about that. Now it, drawing the Plains makes me wish I had the Loren, but he's also, he knows about Loren in my deck, even if I left it on top. Like, I don't think he's going to tap out turn four for a sneak attack. Also, this makes it really look like I have no more lies. <laughs> I hope he's just playing like a Jace or something. That would be nice. Hi, Jewel Dog. Hi, Jules. Let's see. Next turn, if I draw a land, what do I do? I kind of have to get Caves of Chaos Adventure into play, even though obviously I'm not uh, thrilled about this. He's just going to take Bitter Triumph. He has to. Okay, he didn't animate it right now. I guess I, guess I slam Caves of Chaos Adventure. I don't really have a 
different option here. Forest. Go nuts. Do your thing. I'm sure I'm dead. Eh. I mean, so that could be worse, honestly. That's not a Trox or Ration Rider. I'm going to go to seven. He gets the initiative, but I'm going to take the initiative back in a second here. Flipping a land could be kind of nice. And it shuffles back the Ashen Rider. All right, so let's go ahead and send hit Demonic Tutor. I'm just going to go to Forge here. And then play a Fast Bond. So why flipping a land would have been nice, but... All right. Ooh, don't flip a big creature here. Just put a, put a land in the ban or something, and then just pass the turn. You don't have anything? All right, all right. Trap. <laughs> We're very close to winning here. All right, send. Hit a land, hit a land, please. Uh, all right, that's not a land, but it does mean I get to go Cobra, and if he draws a way to reanimate that I'm dead, but otherwise... I feel pretty good. Oh, we got him. We cheesed out BK so hard with that Case of Chaos Adventurer. And that's just about the draft at this point. I'm not getting a third round, I don't think, because we're up 4-0 right now. I told you our decks were sick, and we opened, like, we opened so well. And I played perfectly against BK. Oh, man. Time to go message BK. Yeah, we, we aren't getting another round. Uh, but uh, this is a satisfying draft. And nonetheless, I mean, Mockstrad Ancestral... In a sweet five-color deck, this deck would have loved a Territorial Kavu, but it did get the one sign of Draco. And you know what? This, I do like these styles of decks, not you, Oracle. I, I should have just played, like, literally anything else. Um, just the Mox obviously helps. Elvish Mystic helps. Fast Bond was just kind of mid, but I think that just having the out to having a fast draw is pretty nice. Good mana. And the reason the mana is good is a two Triumph, two Fetch, and that already gives you a baseline of, like, I mean, these fetches were both five color fetches, I believe. Yeah. So I have, like, if you look at a, you know, a normal draft deck of, let's say, 17 lands, or in this case, I even played 18, right? Because I had a mox debt. If it was all basics, you'd have 18 mana symbols provided by your lands. So if you're playing a two color deck, you'd be like nine and nine. Well, if I'm playing a five color deck, obviously it doesn't work any, at all remotely with, uh, you know, all basics, but these add five each, these add three each. So with these four slots, we're already at 16 mana sources. Confluence, another five, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dual lands. So that's another 14. So 35 man different colors of mana uh, without even counting the like basically six basics with Crocus and Moxjet. So 41 colors of mana over 18 lands. So like, yeah, I mean, that that's already eight sources if you divide it by the five colors of each source. I mean, it didn't break down exactly like that, but like we had good mana. It just really wasn't an issue. And then having Ancestral, Mox Jet, Demonic Tutor as our powerful cards along, or like really busted cards alongside Oko, Krasis, Pest Infestation, Kaze Chaos Adventure, Fiery Confluence as like the next tier of cards and then some really solid role players and that late Titania was really good too. So this is what a good five color deck looks like. And even if it didn't have like, let's say it didn't have Ancestral DT Mox, you replace these three first picks with I don't know, uh, maybe like maybe I was able to take a Swords to Plowshares out of a pack and a Memory Lapse. That's even like not that great for three first picks. But even if I did that, this would be still a pretty solid deck. So I like the way the deck turned out. The draft worked out nicely, and it's nice to pick up a dub. That'll do it for today. Appreciate you watching. Sometimes you open these three cards, and it's awesome. But no matter what, cube drafts are fun, and I'll have another one for you right up here tomorrow. I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.